Well, hi, everybody, and welcome inside Hobson Fieldhouse for the fifth game that we are bringing you today on VipeFortBend.com. It's ladies' night as Fulcher takes on Manville for the opportunity to move on to the next round, and the one who wins this one between uh, Fulcher and Manville, I have so much written down here, is going to be Big Bad Beaumont United. That is uh, a big winner, 69-41 to 41 over Lamar Consolidated. I am Roger Smith. Patrick Kinnick is here. Patrick, thanks for filling in and doing that game between Elkins and Maid Creek. Fort Bend teams are looking pretty good, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, we hope that we can continue one more tonight. And, uh, Roger, you're, it's the grand finale for you today. You're going to have a, a good night's sleep after, what, four games of broadcast for you? Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and I guess... A lot of people have had trouble sleeping this past well, week. That's true. I, you're <laughs> probably one of them. I know I'm one of them. Yeah. So it will be good to just basically be knocked out. It'll be nice not to worry about freezing temperatures. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's give you the starting lineups. First of all, for the Fulcher Lady Charges, Chargers, we've got S.A. Obavere, and we are experts in pronouncing her name. Also, Reina Flores. She's starting at guard. Kylie Ashman, a senior and a three-year starter. Then you've got number 32, Kennedy Hill. She's, I guess if it's a guy, you call him a swing man. If it's a girl, what do you say? A, a swing girl? She can play guard. She can play forward. She's very versatile. She's just a sophomore. She might even get taller. And then there's Caroline Hutchison. She is a forward and a senior, and she... Actually, I gave you the wrong name. I meant to give you Jordan Watson. Caroline Hutchison will play, but she's not going to start. For Manville, it's Jordan Marshall, a junior. Aliana Sam, she's a sophomore. Shadaria Tingle, also a sophomore. Michaela Green, a senior, and Kennedy Allen, a senior. Manville is the home team and wearing the white uniforms, but you know, Patrick, I've been kind of confused about Manville's colors. Sometimes I see them wear red. Sometimes I th see them wear navy blue. It appears these are white with black lettering. Yes, and they have a little bit of silverish gray trim, and they're all wearing a shade of red shoes. So they have some red in their uniforms tonight. All right, listeners, please be uh, bear with me because I'm not going to know everybody's name right away. There will be a little bit of a hesitation, and then I'll figure out who everybody is. Fulcher jumping center, and they are going from right to left, and they may get the first basket of the game. They do. Kennedy Hill grabbed the tap and turned around, and there was no one in front of her. Here is Jordan Marshall. She drives into lane and puts one up, and that's good. Actually, she put it off to Shadaria Tingle, and that's basket number one. Two to two, Fulcher. I think we'd have to say they're the underdogs in this game. But uh, they don't care. They're going to play their hearts out, see what happens. Well, Fulcher doing a great job on this possession with offensive boards as S.A. Obavere is dribbling the basketball. They've already put up two shots and grabbed the rebound on each miss. And there goes Kennedy Hill. She gives the ball off to Reina Flores. Over in the right corner, it's Kylie Ashman. Passed up the three, sent it back to the right corner, and the three-pointer is good by junior Reina Flores. Almost one minute into the game, and it's 5-2. to two, Fulcher on top of the favored Manville Lady Mavericks. So S.A., I'm sorry, Jordan Marshall moving to her left. Shoots from the top of the key. No good, and the rebound to Obavere. Here comes Fulcher pushing it down the floor. Obavere sends it to the left corner. Kennedy puts it up. Kennedy's her first name. Kennedy Hill, I guess she stepped on the line before she launched the shot. I think he called traveling, Roger E. I think she kind of shuffled the feet a little bit. Yeah, maybe she was trying to step back and get the three. But yep. if you're not dribbling when you step back, you can get called for steps. <laughs> Jordan Marshall. <laughs> I think she was looking for a pick, but it was a, a pick from a Fulcher player. And now she runs out of room, almost lost it beyond the baseline, sends it out to a teammate. Aliana Sam, she puts it up no good. And the rebound comes down to Fulcher. Grabbed by Jordan Watson. Here's Reina Flores. She's on the left wing. Dribbling over to the top of the key. 
Sends it over to Kylie Ashman. Makes a turn in the free throw circle. Now Kennedy Hill has it top of the key. Now driving on the left block and putting it up off the glass for two is S.A. Obavere. The sophomore, very talented. She is going to be the player on this team for a couple more years. So Manville looking to get into an offensive rhythm. Michaela Green passed up a shot. And now into the lane goes Jordan Marshall. She puts it up. And it's no good with the rebound to Manville. There goes Aliana Sam, Sam streaking to the hoop. Not streaking like in the Ray Stevens sense. <laughs> but she was going in there to try and get a, a dribble drive score out of it. But she drew the foul and she will go to the line. Can you believe that that song actually played on the radio, Roger? <laughs> yes. Of course, I, we, we might be only only two that know about that song. Uh, oh, I don't <laughs> think we're the only two. Well, I mean... <laughs> I, I, there, I'm sure there'll be a few as she missed the first free throw. Okay, but. That's, uh, don't look it up now, <laughs> no. listeners, but uh, if you want to, uh, just go to YouTube and put in Ray Stevens with a V, the streak. <laughs> and the second free throw missed. And Fulcher's Raina Flores grabbed the rebound, but uh, suddenly she had a couple of very close friends from Manville <laughs> trying to rip the ball out of her arms. It's a held ball, and the arrow favors Manville. So they bring it in with Eliana Sam. There's a dribble drive into the paint. Off the front iron, no good as Michaela Green missed it. But McKay, uh, Manville still has possession. And now Jordan Marshall puts it up. And her rebound is a long one. It comes right back to her. Now she drives up to the left restraining line. And she's fouled as he, she goes up for a shot. And I think they're going to accuse Kylie Ashman of the foul. Pretty aggressive rebounding for the Manville uh, team on that possession. How many shots did they get on that? I lost uh, track. I should have had my four pitch at least. counter from you know <laughs> yeah. baseball season. Yeah. Well, but, uh, by the way, I gave wrong information. Reina Flores was actually the one called for the foul. Jordan Marshall missed the first free throw, but she made the second one, and we're going to have a substitution before we continue. That'll be Kaya Henry coming right. onto the floor, and she's got. Two-tone hair. Yeah. It's kind of the Las Vegas gold and jet black. All right, Fulcher gets it in. Full court press. Kennedy Hill down the near sideline. Kills her dribble. Needs to get it over the line. Now Obaveri takes it. And she goes through the free throw circle and all the way to the hoop off the glass from the right side. What a quick crossover move that was. Yes. That was a rush to the hoop, and that is excellence in basketball. Oh, it almost looked like an over and back there. Well, they might have gotten away with that. Jordan Marshall hands it off to Kaya Henry. She's between the rings, guarded closely by Reina Flores. Loses the ball as she gets to the left elbow, and there goes Obaveri pushing it. Now looking for Kennedy Hill, but the cross-court pass stolen by Chaderia Tingle. And here comes Manville, trailing 9-3. From the right wing, the three is good by Michaela Green. And the senior makes it nine to six. Reina Flores moves across the midcourt stripe. Obaveri now has it, gets a pick near the top of the key, but she loses the basketball and a steal by Michaela Green, who's really picked up this Manville team since she came in. And she goes all the way to the hoop. She puts one up but misses off the front iron. However, she draws the foul. You know, when you're kind of looking at someone who might make a, a sudden and dramatic difference in a game, you might not look at Michaela Green and think of her that way. She certainly is not a very tall player. In fact, uh, one of the shorter ones on the court right now. But, boy, she has a lot of energy and a lot of strength because uh, it's hard to get the ball away from her. And when she drives to the baskets, it's very definitive. By the way, she did miss the first free throw. Now we have Shadaria Tingle. She comes off the floor, and she's replaced by Allison Ferguson, another sophomore. Manville has a lot of young talent on this team. 4:01 to go in the first quarter, and Fulcher on top of Manville, 9 to six. Second free throw, swish, makes it nine to seven, Fulcher, and getting it into Kennedy Hill, and there's a steal by guess who? Michaela Green. She passes off, does not take the shot. Jordan Marshall has it on the left wing. And now she hands it off to Green. 
Green almost lost it near the baseline. Now she, it's a smooth criminal activity by Fulcher as they get the steal. Obaveri is fouled in the open court. They're going to accuse Nalia Mejia. Actually, it's Mejia, just like the town near Waco. <laughs> Nalia Mejia, she commits the foul. She really didn't think that she had committed a foul. That's a common uh a common thought by the by the fowlers. Yes, it is uh, whether they're professionals or not. Well, that's an over and back by Fulcher. They threw the ball in, and Reina Flores and Obaveri were both trying to get the ball, and it bounced off their hand, touched on the offensive side, went into their backcourt, and as soon as they touched it, the whistle blew. Three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Kaya Henry. Sends it over on the right side to Nalia Mejia. There goes Marshall to the left block in a pass across the lane. A teammate gets the shot off, but the shot is no good, and now the ball is in the hands of Obaveri. Moving down the near sideline, and there's a little entry pass. Gets it to Tatiana Washington, and a throwaway. Jordan Watson and Tatiana Washington not in sync on that particular play. Now we cross the three minute threshold. Nine to seven, Fulcher hanging on to the lead. Jordan Marshall kills her dribble inside the free throw circle, throws a quick pass that is tipped out of bounds by Fulcher's Kennedy Hill. We're inside Hobson Fieldhouse. It's been a great day of basketball. There's a quick shot by Jordan Marshall. She threw the ball in and got the ball right back and launched it from the left corner. It was no good, but Manville gets the rebound. And Kaya Henry looking for a way to get through the defense, but Kennedy Hill was stopping her. Then she made her way into the paint, and she was knocked to the floor. One of those no layups defense maneuvers. Her shot is no good, but Kaya Henry will get two shots. It was 9-2 to two at one point. Let's see what the run becomes after those free throws, the first of which is good. Well, it's uh, Murphy's Law striking here, Patrick. Manville knows that I haven't called any of their games this year, and so they send in three substitutes <laughs> at yeah. a time. Keeping you on your toes, Roger. <laughs> and the second free throw, good. So it's a seven-point run that ties the game, 9-9. Nine to nine. Reina Flores tried to get it in, and there is, wow, that green. She's just, she's playing like uh, her, you know, getting to eat for the next week depends on it. <laughs> and a timeout taken by Fulcher. It's 9-9, nine to nine, 2.36 to go in the first quarter. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with X1. Nine to nine basketball game, and now a fast break transition basketball for Manville, and out ahead of the pack, it's Kaya Henry, the sophomore who scores to make it 11 to nine. Now Fulcher gets quickly back down the floor as Kylie Ashman holds the ball over her head, dribbles, moves to her left, now gets the ball to S.A. Obavere. And if Fulcher is to win tonight, S.A. is going to have to play a fantastic game. Now Ashman, far sideline, looking, looking, and gets it back to Reina Flores. Now at the top of the key, she finds Jordan Watson, and she is she has her pocket picked by Green. 
Here comes Jordan Marshall up the middle of the floor. Finds Green on the left wing. She goes inside the three-point arc. Puts up a 12-footer off the glass. Too hard, no good. Reina Flores grabs the rebound. She's almost knocked down. What is the call going to be here? It's a held ball. And Deshanna Brown, head coach for the Chargers, does not like the call. She thought maybe Reina was pushed. Obaveri to throw it in. Now her teammates coming back to her. Kennedy Hill has it near the far sideline. She's making some nice spin moves in the backcourt, but then a pass. It, it looked like a football interception there, uh, Patrick. Green intercepted a pass and just went right out of bounds. <laughs> she just had no chance to stop her momentum and start dribbling. And now there is Green stealing it away from Kylie Ashman. This time it's a held ball and it goes to Fulcher. No, Manville. Sorry about that. You know, there's certain arenas where we have a view of where the arrow is. Yes. And sometimes they put it on the scoreboard here, but they don't put it on the scoreboard in this particular you keep game. keep track, among other things, Roger. Among other things. <laughs> but at least the bathrooms work. Yeah. Jordan Marshall sends it into the corner, and a three-pointer on the way too hard off the back iron by Ayana Sam. I've been putting an L in Ayana's name. Calling her Aliana. I need to get the L out of there. 101 to go in the first quarter. Chittimatassi comes in. Now there's Kennedy Hill quickly ahead. And blowing the bunny inside is Kylie Ashman. Fulcher grabs the rebound, but then it goes off of Fulcher hand out of bounds. Kylie Ashman was ahead of everyone, and maybe she just thought about it a little too much as she was heading to the hoop. About to have another substitution for Fulcher. It'll be Layla DeWoody. Kylie Ashman taking a break with less than a minute to go in the first period. It's 11-9 Manville. The Lady Mavericks have scored the last nine points. There goes Henry. Launches one off the side. No good. Rebound grabbed and a putback try by Kennedy Allen. She misses, but she draws the foul, and she'll go to the line. Did you ever go to a store that was out of water this week, Patrick? Uh, actually, I did not go to the store for the last, I don't know, five, six days. Well, I had to go to an office depot this morning, and I bought a phone charger. But, you wow. know, in the checkout area, they always have some drinks and things and I got me some smart water so I'm feeling pretty smart <laughs> <laughs> well their second free throw was missed the ball went out of bounds and the officials ruled that it was last touched by Fulcher and so Nalia Mejia throws it in way to the top of the key to Sam Sam backs up between the rings Reina Flores on her she makes a move to her left Leaves it behind for Mejia. Mejia with a two-pointer that misses everything. And the Fulcher girls just let it fall to earth out of bounds. And the Chargers will have possession of the ball. But Manville wants to deploy the full court press. I mean, I had a football coach when we would play the not only the man-to-man, -man, but just right up on top of wide receivers. We called that the redneck. But now Manville is moving its pieces back a little bit. Flores gets it in. DeWoody trying to make her way up the floor, and Manville deflects it. See a lot of teams, Patrick, uh, that won't start full court pressing right at the beginning. They kind of let teams get comfortable, and then they start putting on the pressure in the backcourt. There goes DeWoody. Across the midcourt circle, drives to the left block, leaves it for Kennedy Hill, moving inside, now kicks it back out, faking the three and going back in. Now going back out is Hill. Now Reina Flores launches the three, and she launched it after the buzzer. It would not have counted, but it is 12-9 Manville after one period, and Manville closing the period with a 10-0 run. We'll be back here on VipeFortBend.com. 
20 with Class 5A girls playoff basketball, the second round, the area round. First Tire and Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bike Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Welcome back, 12 to nine. Manville on top of Fulcher as we move to the second quarter of this game. You know, you got Nalia Mejia playing for Manville and that makes me think of a story I heard about two guys who were arguing about the town outside of Waco. One of them said, it's Mexia. And the other guy says, no, it's Mejia. And say so they go into a fast food restaurant to say, sir, I want you to answer our question. And he starts talking real slowly and he says, where are we? And the answer was Dairy Queen. Ha, ha, ha. Fulcher with the ball. One of those right now. And there goes Obavere near the baseline. Cross court skip pass to Kennedy Hill, who shoots a three pointer, and it's over everything. And here comes Manville on the run with Sam. Ayana Sam with a nice change of direction on the dribble to get across the timeline. And clapping her hands in her face is Obavere. Now in the left corner, Jordan Marshall's three is good, and it's 15-9. to nine. Fulcher needs to get the momentum back and fast. And Coach Deshanna Brown holding the basketball for a moment, giving her a few extra seconds to give some suggestions and instructions to beat this full-court press. Manville has... Made it difficult for Fulcher to get the ball down the floor. Another substitution, Jordan Watson comes in for Fulcher. And Layla DeWitty takes a seat. Reina Flores all the way down the floor, but not far enough. Green deflects it and it goes out of bounds. Fulcher was lucky that wasn't a turnover. I wonder if she's related to Matt Schaub. You know, he, he would often underthrow. <laughs> oh. Flores in the forecourt. Gets it in bounds to Ashman. She hands it to Obaveri, looking inside. Makes a move to her left, gets a pick. Hands it back to Kennedy Hill, into the paint. And she, she is stripped from behind, but not stripped, actually fouled. Kaya Henry grabbed her arm, and that's why the ball came loose. We're in the first minute of this second quarter, and Fulcher led early, but they're down now 15-9. to nine. You don't put down times on when scores are. I'm wondering when the last time that Fulcher got a basket. Well, you know, I think it's been at least six minutes on the clock because it was, like you said, 9-2, to two, wasn't it? At yes, one point? they got off to a very fast start. Yeah. Flores looking inside, does get it to Kennedy Hill. She's open, and her shot comes up a little bit short. And now it's Fulcher putting on the full court press. And it's a timeout called by Manville. And we'll take it with them. This is VipeFortBend.com. 7.04 to go in this second quarter, and it's 15-9. to Manville on top of Fulcher. GetAGreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAGreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. 
Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. Well, we didn't get you back in time, but a uh, long three-pointer was good by Michaela Green. And now Obaveri trying to bring the ball up the floor right in front of the Fulcher bench. And Coach Deshanna Brown is just beside herself. She cannot, she can't believe the explanation she just got from one of the officials as to why it should be Manville basketball. Henry inbounds it to Jordan Marshall. There's a cluster of players near the top of the key. Marshall goes left, now right, sends it to the corner, and a travel before the shot was released. So Kaya Henry won't get the three ball on that one. And Henry didn't like the call on traveling. Did you think she traveled? I, I, I didn't see it. You know, it, it looked like a pretty good play, but the referee's right there on the play. Kennedy Hill dribbling a little bit, stopping near the sideline. Killed her dribble and got it to Flores. Now it's Jordan Watson making a dribble drive, kicks it back out to the left corner. Flores passes up the three. Obaveri, a three from the top of the key off the side of the rim. No good. Kennedy Hill grabs the rebound and sends it back out to a teammate. Now it's Flores, another three on the way off the front iron. No good. And another rebound for Fulcher. Kennedy Hill, mid-range jumper. Too long. No good. And finally, Manville gets it. Jordan Marshall ahead. And now an entry pass to Green, who goes up strong. Not Green, correction. That was actually... Shadaria Tingle. What a nice pass by Henry there on the on the little cut from from Tingle. It was such good ball throws. movement. I yeah. didn't even describe, you know, I didn't name everybody who touched the ball. It it's just hard happened to keep so track quickly. When they pass it so quickly like that. And wide left on the first free throw. Manville with another substitution. They're making a lot of those. Kennedy Allen comes out, and she's replaced by Allison Ferguson, the sophomore, comes in for the senior. And Allison Ferguson, they don't list heights on this roster, but she's tall. I might not be a smart man, but she's tall. <laughs> Under six minutes to go in the half. It's 18-9. to nine. Manville on top of Fulcher. Obaveri moving in, makes her move to the hoop, scoops it up, and it rolls out. Tough luck. There's a lid on the basket lately for the Chargers. Now here comes Jordan Marshall quickly ahead for Manville. Into the paint she goes. Kicks it back out to Green. Three on the way. In and out. No good. Rebound comes down to Ferguson. But she loses it. Reina Flores grabs possession of the ball. Obaveri now bringing it up. Dribbling with the left hand. Fulcher trailing 18-9. to They have given up 16 straight points. Now inside Kennedy Hill. Fakes her defender and blows the bunny from inside. She got her defender up in the air and could have made a layup. But it, it it's just it's one of those things. It, it might have gotten inside the Charger girls' heads at this point. Well, Roger, I, you know, they've, I think they've missed their last 15 shots at least. I, the lid's on the basket right now, and they just can't seem to get it one in. Well, there's plenty of time for Fulcher to come back. But this game is not going the same way that the, I think it was the Saturday, November 21st playoff volleyball match between Fulcher and Manville. That, of course, was a straight set win by Fulcher. And now there's a discussion between officials and Coach Deshanna Brown of Fulcher. There's a mix-up on substitutions and who has been given clearance to come into the game. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really understand all the substitution. You know, they, they try to save time on these substitution things, and then they have to, when they break the rule, they redo it, and they end up wasting time. <laughs> so I'm not sure anymore. By the way, I've never really understood hockey substitutions. I mean, <laughs> does anyone ever get uh, penalized for going out onto the ice too soon during a line change? You can, do, you can get a penalty on that, but... A rare, it's a rare penalty. Five minutes left, still 18-9. to nine. Now Fulcher has the basketball after a missed free throw. Reina Flores trying to get around Marshall. And it's a blocking foul on Marshall. By the way, the 
Mavericks uniforms. I, I have not seen the Manville girls play this year, but they have Mavericks written kind of like Dodgers or Cardinals, you know, in that kind of cursive type script. Yeah. Now there's a three on the way off the front iron. No good by DeWoody. And the rebound to Manville. Quickly streaking down the floor. And the pass a little too far out in front of Tingle. But Manville still manages to recover it. And now they send it to the right corner. It is Mejia. She puts up the two-pointer. No good. And good defense by Fulcher. But they can't hang on to the rebound after the ball was loose. And now Manville has it back. Henry has it. And I think she's going to restore order by backing up near the midcourt circle, setting the offense. Drives to the left elbow, gives it back to Green, who double clutches and puts it up near the free throw line. And the rebound to Kennedy Hill of Fulcher. She is gets the ball taken one away from behind. And now a held ball as Ashman and Mejia ended up on the floor, both with partial possession of the ball. And now we have an official who loudly says sub, so there are no more confusing moments about who is in the game. Just to make sure. Should be in the game. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Green inbounds the ball. Henry moves it across the timeline, guarded by Obaveri. And now wide open in the lane. No good from the right elbow, the shot of Mejia. And Fulcher grabs the rebound. Reyna gets it to Obaveri. We're under four minutes to go in the first half. Now Kennedy Hill sets a pick for Obaveri. It was going to be a pick and roll, but it's stolen by Green. She's streaking to the hoop. Her layup is no good from the left side. Rebound Manville, however, and they get it back out there to Henry. Henry still with the ball. Shoots the two-pointer from the right wing, and a long rebound goes down to Manville. Green, three-pointer, good. That's a real gut punch to the Fulcher Chargers who now trail it by a score of 21 to nine, 321 to go before the half. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with X1. Patrick, I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone in Hobson Fieldhouse right now. I want to thank everyone who's listening to us because everybody did something for somebody this week. There are a lot of unpleasant tasks that had to be done. It was a rough week. So good on you, everybody, because there was nobody that just sat back and waited for good things to happen. Everybody had to do something that was difficult and uncomfortable. Well, there were two players that that uh, collided with each other and a loose ball rolled out of bounds. And we have an injury to Diana Petrie of Manville and she is seated on the floor near midcourt. We're gonna take a quick time out and be back. It's 21 to nine, that's our score with 3.16 to go in the half. Manville on top of Fulshire. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. 
Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bike Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Well, some folks from the Manville bench assisted Petrie in getting back to the bench, and she is seated now, but she could not put a lot of weight on her, her right foot, so she might have a painful injury. Obaveri going down the left side of the free throw lane, puts one up, but she was pushed. The shot was no good, but S.A. Obaveri going to the free throw line, and you can just see the frustration on her face because they've had so many offensive trips where they just have not gotten anything out of it. And there they break the scoring drought. It was a 19, number 10. 19 to, to nothing run. She finally broke it. And, and they have also had the trouble getting the ball up the floor when they get in the backcourt and meet that full court press. The second free throw missed. And here come the Manville Mavericks. Ayana Sam with the ball dribbling between the rings. And she beckons one of her teammates to come over and help her. Uh, Maybe with a pick, but nobody comes that way. There goes Sam, moving to her left. Goes deep into the corner. Now Green has it. Green. She's got Kennedy Hill right on her. And Kennedy deflects a pass. It rolls over near the sideline. That should be over and back, or should it not? I guess it shouldn't, because it was touched by Kennedy Hill. Now Green, into the forecourt, pulls up from the free throw line and scores to make it 23 to 10, Manville on top. Obaveri now pushing it down the floor. Right down the lane, she goes, puts it in, two and a foul. S.A. Obavere, a rush to the hoop, and that is excellence in basketball. It sure is, and they needed that again. Trying to get some kind of scoring run of their own here. All right, we have a substitution as Tatiana Washington, the sophomore forward, comes off the floor for Fulcher, and she's replaced by, let's see... Jordan Watson, Obaveri spinning the basketball. First one good. Well, only one because that completes the three-point play. It's 23 to 13. So you're within 10. You're within hailing distance. So Henry has it. She's between the rings. Looking at Flores. Gets a pick. Kills her dribble. Throws it to the right near sideline. Jordan Marshall goes to the other side of the free throw line and finger rolls it in. With that quickness was able to get around the scrum of defenders. And there is a whistle and I'm not sure who it's gonna be on. I guess it's on Manville's Shadaria Tingle. Actually, I should say Shadaria. It's not a hard ch. And Tingle is now talking to the official who made the call and asking for an explanation, something you and I have observed over the year, that we didn't used to do that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, only yeah there coaches, wasn't a whole lot of discussion with the referee. <laughs> it used to be that only coaches were going to right. negotiate or whatever or object. I remember my coach saying that. You don't, you leave that up to me and get out there and play ball. After the first free throw made, Obaveri, second one rims out. And Jordan Marshall moving the ball up the floor for Manville. Makes a move at the last instant, and a finger roll is short, no good. Rebound, Obaveri, Fulcher pushing it, down 25 to 14. Obaveri started to go into the paint, and then she reversed her field. Now it's Kylie Ashman, who sends a pass to Flores over in the corner, and I think it was either behind her or Reyna wasn't expecting it. 133 to go in the half, 25 to 14. Jordan Marshall moving slowly across the midcourt stripe, changing the pace here a little bit. Tries to get around Obaveri, makes two shots at it, and now gets it to a wide open teammate in the paint. Kennedy Allen scores. That is a sweet assist, and we want to thank the folks at Office Depot for their assist, but I better stop reading that right now. Green from the right corner, her three-pointer is no good. An attempted save and a held ball 
Green and Obaveri both with their hands on the basketball and the arrow will, will favor Fulcher. Reina Flores saying, get over here close to me. Don't make me throw a long pass. And when she does get it in, Ashman is there, but guess who is there to slap it out of bounds? That's Green. Now into Kennedy Hill. Near the left sideline, now moves back to the middle. Twists around, gets it to Flores. Flores behind the three-point arc. Stops her dribble. Obaveri now has it. Tingle guarding her. And Tingle blocks a pass and makes a steal. Quickly ahead. Looking at Mejia. Fakes a pass. Puts it up. No good. But she does recover her rebound after several hands were on it. Now Green throws a pass that is batted down. Now they get it inside. And a foul on Tingle. Uh, Tingle drew the foul. She put the shot up. And Kylie Ashman, I think, uh, got a finger or an elbow or something across the face. She's going to stay out there. But she is, uh, she's is. she been rubbing her eyes. Now she's stopped. I guess she's okay. Just under 29 seconds remaining in this first half. 27 to 14, Manville leads Fulcher. Jordan Marshall banking her free throw off of the backboard. Correction, it's Shadaria Tingle. You know, Shadaria and Jordan both have the very long hair. Actually, no, I'm, that's not true. <laughs> it's been a long day, Patrick. Yeah, well, I don't know if it'd be interesting to play with the, the hair flopping around like that. I guess it doesn't bother them. They're, they're just used to it. And, but, yeah, they. I guess that's why they put it in the braids and the, the ponytails and such. Second free throw, no good. Here comes Reina Flores across the midcourt stripe. Tingle waiting there for her. Obaveri trying to get around her defender. Kills her dribble near the free throw line and loses the ball. And now you have players... On the floor, going after that loose ball. And you know what, I think it might just have been pure enthusiasm, but I saw a couple of Manville players just standing very, very close to where Obaveri was prone on the floor. We usually don't see chippiness in girls' games. We haven't this year. Maybe we just did. We just did. <laughs> uh, I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> Let the record show that uh, yeah. Mr. Kinnick uh, yeah. said there was chippiness. 13 seconds to go in the half. 28-14, Manville on top. Nine seconds. As Jordan Marshall crosses the midcourt stripe, you better do something quickly. Four seconds left. Oh, Shoots boy. from the free throw line, and it's no good. And Obaveri called for a foul. She is boiling over with frustration. Her palms go to the heavens. She can't believe she was called for that foul. And how many does she have now? That could be critical. Well, it doesn't show, it shows three on the board. Three, Roger. oh boy, that's not good. Anytime you get three before halftime of a game that's anything short of an NBA game, then it's, it's just not good. 1.08 left on the clock, and this is easy pickings for Jordan Marshall going to the line, probably might have been under the assumption that it'd be a 28-14 halftime score. Now it's 30 to 14, and that will be the halftime score. Well, Manville feeling good about itself as they go to the halftime locker room. 30 to 14 is our score. We'll take a break, and Patrick and I will be back. He will give you some halftime numbers, and we'll also give you some scores of other games that have been played around the greater Houston area. And Fort Bend County is doing very well. Just saying, spoiler alert, we'll be back.
GetAGreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAGreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Baps, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice Remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience Channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with X1. By Fort Bend's all-day five-game marathon Super Saturday basketball playoff extravaganza on, did I say VibeFortBend.com? Well, it's being brought to you by Xfinity with the X1 Sports app. Get up-to-the-minute scores, stats, and standings right on your TV. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. And by First Tire and Automotive. Make sure your vehicles are in shape for the winter First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. All four of them are open on Saturdays. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. And we'd also like to thank the team at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. Office Depot helps our team at vipefortbend.com take care of business every day as we bring you Fort Bend County Sports every week in addition to all those people that i thanked before i want to also thank lauren cook she is a vipe ambassador at bush high school and she kept me up to date on the bush boys performance and they got that win over katie taylor a four seed beating a one which i was able to share with our listeners while i was describing the ridgepoint girls very tough loss against houston heights and also the dulles vikings girls win over Jersey Village, a team that had lost only two games, and those only two games that they had lost were to undefeated Cypress Creek. So, you know, it's it's really amazing what Dulles has done. They are also undefeated. So I can kind of see it formulating right now. Maybe the Dulles Lady Vikings against undefeated Cy Creek, both teams undefeated, playing for the Region 3 championship and a spot in the final four in san antonio all right patrick you and i have both put a lot of work into this saturday's scoreboard well you put a most the majority of it just to yeah but you're the, the closer see uh, I, I put little to. blue dots by the ones that i just couldn't yeah, come I, up I, with i couldn't find them all but we got a few anyway all right well as we mentioned before the ridgepoint girls lost today their playoff road ends with a 61 to 58 loss to houston heights in the class 6a bracket but you think about it, Heights is now going to play Cy Creek, which beat Katie Cinco Ranch 67-29. to You know, Cinco Ranch, I don't think they had won a playoff game in girls basketball in about 16 years or so. So they enjoyed beating George Ranch in the Battle of the Ranch dressing salads. <laughs> uh, but uh, Cy Creek knocked Cinco Ranch out in round number two, so now it's going to be Cy Creek against Heights. Good luck, Heights. 
Now, also going to the second round, the Dulles Lady Vikings with a clutch win over Jersey Village. 75-68 to was the final score. And we've been trying to get the score of the girls' game between Tompkins and Spring Branch Memorial. I don't have Mario Ellie's number. Yeah, they're so just all they got is I don't know how to progress. get that. We've been trying every other avenue that we know of. So Dulles will be playing either Tompkins or Memorial. All right, moving on. So we got Fulcher and Manville, and Manville leads it 30-14 to 14 at halftime, and the winner will play Beaumont United. Beaumont United was a pretty decisive winner, 69-41 to 41 over Lamar Consolidated. So not everybody from Fort Bend County can win today, and Ridgepoint and Lamar Consolidated have dropped out of the running for a state championship. We don't have a score yet on Foster versus Barbers Hill. I have a feeling, you know, I'm, there's a lot of things I'd be willing to bet that uh, Foster is, is you know, winning that ball game. But the winner of Foster versus Barbers Hill will take on Friendswood. Friendswood beat Angleton 47-43. to That kind of hurts me because you know, I was rooting for the Angleton girls. And, uh, well, they, they came close. Coach Robinson, you did a great job jumping in after the season had started and led those girls a long way. So we already know about uh, Beaumont United beating Lamar Consolidated, and they'll play the winner of this game in the next round. And, uh, well, that kind of completes things on the girls' side. So now let's go over to the boys' side. We'll start with Class 5A boys, Hightower, 100-43. to They just beat the dog out of Waltrip, and they will play either Crosby or Texas City. We've been working on the, getting the score to Crosby, Texas City. It's just nowhere to be found, at least for us. On the boys' side, the Foster girls rolled on, but the Foster boys are doing just fine as well. They beat Sharpstown today, 55-44 to right here inside Hobson Fieldhouse. And meanwhile, Beaumont United, I guess they're just like Laporte. I'm sorry, I mean they're just like uh, Foster in that they have a very strong boys' team and girls' team. And Beaumont United beat Laporte today, 92-54. to So it's the Foster boys against Beaumont United in the next round. Maybe on Tuesday night, but we're not sure. Heartbreak for the Marshall Buffs boys. They went to overtime against Northside, and Northside won it on a buzzer beater, 73-71. to So Northside will now advance to play either Goose Creek Memorial or Nederland. All right, Elkins. Right before this game, they beat the Maid Creek boys right here at Hobson, 66-37. So Elkins will face either the Memorial Mustangs or Westbury in round number two. You know, I'm kind of jumping around from Class 6A to Class 5A. I don't mean to do that. So the stuff I described about Hightower, Foster, Beaumont United, and Marshall, and Northside, well, that was all 5A. Well, Elkins is Class 6A. And their win over Maid Creek made it a clean sweep of the Class 6A boys teams, District 26A out of Fort Bend ISD. They all won against the Katy teams. Clean sweep. Elkins 66-37 over Maid Creek. And also Fort Bend Bush beat Katy Taylor. That was a four seed beating a one seed. Bush will face either Heights or Cy Fair in round number two. Moving on to other 6A action. Ridgepoint beat Tompkins 71-58 to over at the Merrill Center. And they will face Bel Air, which beat Stratford today at Del Mar Fieldhouse. So it is Ridgepoint against Bel Air in the next round. And the Travis Tigers beat Seven Lakes 76-46. to And they will play either Lamar or Cy Creek in round number two. And uh, one other thing I did not mention from Class 5A, the Angleton Wildcats beat Madison 71-55. to So they advance, and they will play either Manville or Barbers Hill. Wow, Patrick. Look, there's less than a minute left in halftime. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with the start of the second half. 30-14, to Manville leads Fulcher. This is VikeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? 
Yes, the F word as in free. Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vite Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Okay, here we go, starting the third quarter. Fulcher gets the ball first, and they will be trying to advance from left to right against the Manville Mavericks, who really closed the first half strong. It'll be Reina Flores to throw it in from the far sideline. They had her set up over here on our side. Roger, you said a finishing strong. It was 9-2 to two, Fulcher. We talked about their good start. And then uh, Manville ended the half with a 28 to five uh, decisive score here in the, that first half. So, well, I guess if you're Deshanna Brown, head coach of Fulcher, you just don't tell your girls about that. Yeah. And now there's a carry on the first possession. To be honest, turning with you, the ball over. Yeah, literally it, uh, was Kennedy Hill. Fulcher just cannot uh, handle the the pressure, the constant pressure of Manville. They are attacking at all times kaya henry is fouled out in the open court by jordan watson and we already see a substitution made as tatiana washington is going to come in for jordan jordan just committed her fourth foul oh my goodness that's not a good thing you're going to have uh, eligible players dropping out so there is Henry moving to her right, now back to her left. Now there's Jordan Marshall, sends it over into the corner to Green. Her three-pointer is no good, but going up strong after grabbing the offensive board is Shadari Tingle. By the way, uh, coming into this game, Manville, they're the district champions with a record of 15-1 and in 22-5A and 22-5 and overall. That's easy to remember. 22-5A champions are 22-5 and five overall. It, and the first it also helps good. if you've had that smart water. You can That helps you remember that kind of stuff. Hey, um, I got a score for you, but uh, hold on. You must be on a better site than me. No, it's just I know somebody. Okay. <laughs> and second free throw, no good by Tingle. And the rebound grabbed by Fulcher. And it's Kennedy Hill who is knocked over. And the ball went out of bounds. Last touched by Manville. Actually, last touched by Fulcher. So Manville will inbound underneath the basket at which they're shooting. They lead 31-14. All right. It's going to be a three-pointer. Jordan Marshall, nothing but net. Oh, boy. <laughs> Reina Flores bring the ball up the middle of the floor and she loses it to Jordan Marshall just after she crosses the midcourt circle. Then a layup by Henry. That was a sweet assist and we want to thank Office Depot for their assist all year long, helping us take care of business. Kennedy Hill back to Obaveri, launches the three. That's good. Maybe that'll get the ship turned around for Fulcher. They trail 36-17. Yeah, it's... There is Henry. And Obaveri knocks it out of her hands, but Henry recovers it. And now in the middle of the lane, there goes Green with a little floater that's no good. Rebound Obaveri. She's pushing it. Gets around Green. Gets across the midcourt stripe. But Manville got back on defense very well. Flores launches the three. Way short, but dead on line. Kennedy Hill grabs the rebound, and she can't get the put back. And here goes Henry throwing a pass that's just a little bit too hot coming in to... Shadaria Tingle. Uh, cut, how do you spell? Hey, say her first name. Henry. Kaya, Kaya Henry. Kaya Henry. Um, you don't see basketball players wearing those kind of glasses very often. They they look like uh, they're not they're not your typical on court type glasses. She looks like she will be uh, ready to read a book later on. But she doesn't I play got a like trivia that. question for you in a moment. Kennedy Hill all the way to the hoop. Her layup comes up short. And a travel 
called against Manville's Kaya Henry. She grabbed that rebound of the missed layup and she took a step before she started dribbling or before she passed the ball. Obaveri to throw it in, in along the baseline. Looking, looking, and she bounces it off the back of uh, Tingle's leg. Smart Spe play. Speaking of glasses, did you ever have to wear glasses when you played? Never. I didn't have to wear them until I got uh, up in years, I, shall I just, we say. I, I, into my, Kennedy Hill. She drives into the paint. She's hit hard before she gets... I think she was going to get called for traveling, but they called a foul. Well, not to belabor the point, but it's, I always wondered what it'd be like to play with glasses. It, if it kind of throws you off and, uh, you know, having to worry about whether they're going to stay on your, your face or not, but they handle it pretty well. Ayana Sam committed the foul. It was a foul on the floor. Now Hill with her back to the basket, trying to move in, and they call her for traveling on that play. She was backing in on Ayana Sam. So it is Sam whose glasses you were describing? Uh, Henry. Henry. Yeah. And I think she has uh, some sort yeah, of a headband or something that keeps them, helps keep them on because she's got something uh, around her head there underneath her hair. She plays hard. I like the way they, the whole Mandel team, they play so aggressively. Jordan Marshall working on Obaveri, moves to the left block, now gives the ball up, now gets it back, launches a three, hits the floor, and a foul is committed as she launches that three. It will count, and she will go to the line, and that will mean that in consecutive... Yeah. They, I on. noticed that two Manville players were down, and they were whistling. I'm not sure which foul they called. I think they called the foul on the rebound. I think they could have called one either way there. But well, there was no rebound. Well, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just on the confused. on the rebound attempt, I should say. Um, okay, so a loose ball foul, maybe after the uh, shot had gone yeah, through. Yeah, they counted I the bucket. Yeah, they counted the bucket. Okay, Reina Flores took a very short rest, and she comes off the floor. And Kylie Ashman replaces her. Fulcher inbounds the ball. Kennedy Hill has it. Now quickly up the floor is DeWoody. DeWoody going to go coast to coast. No, she passes off. Now she gets the ball back near the top of the key. Gives it to Obaveri looking inside. She goes with the Killa crossover, but she's still dribbling near the top of the key. Reina Flores, three from the left corner. Good. Second three-pointer in this third quarter for Fulcher. They trail 39 to 20. Jordan Marshall now moving to her left and gets through all the defense and missed the layup. She blew the bunny. And now Caroline Hutchison brings in some, some valuable height for Fulcher. And now inside to Kennedy Hill, puts one up off the glass, could not get it to fall, but she did draw the foul. That's on Ayana Sam. And Kennedy will go to the free throw line. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do one of your one of your observations. You you pull these things out all the time. So I we, I saw something that we've probably never seen, or I, I've never noticed in basketball history. Tonight, really? Just now, within the last minute. Do you have an idea, any idea what it would be? I'm I haven't a clue. Uh, let's see. What's her name here? Uh, DeWoody was dribbling the ball up the floor, and as she was dribbling. As she was dribbling, she pulled her mask down. Pulled her mask she down pulled while her mask dribbling. Down while she was dribbling, just kind of instinctively, she, she didn't want it on her, over her face. And, yeah. But you, you have never seen that in basketball history, have you? I don't think I have. <laughs> 39 to 21 is the score after one free throw made by Fulcher. And there is Green, loses the ball in the corner, stolen away by these Fulcher Chargers. Now Caroline has it, and she gives it to Reina Flores. And a timeout taken by the Chargers. We'll take it with them. This is VibeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive is giving you the chance to say the F word and not get in trouble. What? Yes, the F word as in free. 
Free alignment with the purchase of four tires or a free air filter with the purchase of a synthetic oil change. Check the website at firsttireandauto.com for all the details and up to 25% off fluid maintenance services. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Bike Sports, is there to make sure your ride is safe to and from practice and the games. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugar Land and Cinco Ranch. All stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. All right, we're back, 39 to 21. And I have something else to say about the, the glasses that Kaya Henry is wearing okay. when we get an opportunity. Caroline Hutchison does get the ball inbounded to Layla DeWoody and throws it far ahead to Reina Flores. She drives inside the three-point arc. Hutchison, entry pass, caught by DeWoody. Can't get the shot that she wants, though, and now Hutchison has the ball back in the right corner. And it's Reina Flores backing in, turns around, puts it up, and she draws the foul. Shadaria Tingle with a look of incredulity <laughs> on her face. She was said, actually. I went straight up. There's it, no way you should call it me looked for like that pretty, foul. It looked like pretty good defense. She was stomping her foot uh, about that call. Okay, but, so Kaya Henry, you know, you described her glasses a little bit as Flores misses the first free throw. And uh, they're, they're not only functional, I'm sure, very strong safety-type glasses that you'd wear playing basketball, yeah. but they're also very stylish. They look that's, pretty good. That's what I was saying. They, they, they don't look like sports-type glasses. Well, well, yes, you, you made that observation. I want to layer on another bit of observation okay. as the second free throw goes down to make it 39-22. to 22. There's this singer named Lisa Loeb, a one-hit wonder. I can't even remember the title of her hit. I oh. could sing it for you. You've got but, to tell uh, us the title. She wore glasses like that. You remember her? Time out. What was that? Lisa Loeb. She was a one-hit wonder. We'll just keep it right here so we can discuss this. You have got to. You don't know okay, the song. So L-O-E-B, Lisa Loeb. And she had this song where she said, You say I only hear what I want to. Do you remember that one? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, so she wore glasses. Her song was very popular for a while, and there were girls and women all over the United States buying frames for their glasses so they could look like Lisa Loeb. Like, and they're, they're, is that what you're yeah, talking we're about? Yeah, we're looking at her. Kind the, of the these dark. are the ones that I'm talking about. See, yeah. Patrick uh, has brought this up on his phone. <laughs> got, they're kind, kind of a tortoise shell. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but enough about that. Yeah, we, uh, it's, uh, uh, I we got sorry we get here, sidetracked Patrick. here a little bit. But, That's the uh, Foster girls final score. Foster is okay, trailing by down. 17 here. The Foster girls won 63 to 25. All righty. Here Big we go. Win. They beat Barbers Hill 63 to 25. And let's see, Lauren Cook, our VIPE ambassador from Bush High School, she's been in one arena watching basketball all day. She's I think given she's you been a lot of updates. Katie's Merrill Center and the Tompkins girls beat Memorial 57-42. Tompkins girls 57, Memorial 42. All right. So that means that Tompkins is going to play Dulles so in round number be three. A good, good matchup. Okay, back to the action. Henry dribbling the basketball, guarded by Flores, moves right, now left. Flores playing good defense. Now a pass is made, and the ball was loose, but Henry got it back. Obaveri almost got a steal. Moving in is Kennedy Allen. She twists around, puts the shot up. It's no good, but she does draw a foul. Yeah, Coach. And, um, and they call uh, Caroline Hutchison for the foul. Coach Brown for Fulcher was not too happy with that call. Looked like it was pretty decent defense. Might have been a makeup call. Yep, you know. Officials would probably say there's never such a thing no, as a makeup call. But, but we, we never all... really have evidence to prove in a court of law that there are <laughs> makeup calls, but sometimes we suspect it. Yes. Well, after a second missed free throw, Manville gets the ball back and they send it to the right corner, and Kaya Henry drains the three. Well, that was uh, Marshall, wasn't it? Was it zero? Yeah. Okay, Perhaps you're right. The, Sorry, Jordan Marshall. Because I was going to say that's her fourth three of the of the ball game. She is uh, really draining those threes. I'd like to see a contest between her and uh, Grace Alvarez of Heights. 
Now a steal as Obaveri goes down through the defense. There's Jordan Marshall ahead of everyone, and she lays it off the glass for two. And now Manville has scored more than twice the number of points that Fulcher has. It's 45 to 22. Well, uh, one of the big turn, one of the big uh, stories of the game is the turnovers. Uh, I've got Ma uh, Fulcher for 16 turnovers. I could be off by a few, but they have just been harassed all game long. Green almost harassed the ball out of DeWoody's hand, but DeWoody managed to make her way through all the defense. And there's Caroline Hutchison, the tallest player for Fulcher. Got a little feed pass from Kennedy Hill. Made the quick turnaround and off the glass for two. She draws the foul and will go to the line for the three-point play opportunity. That was a great, great bit of passing, and they got it down low, and she finished nicely. See if she can get this free throw in. Here we go again with the substitutions, Roger. <laughs> Player yes, comes in. Yes, I, I think... Uh, <laughs> I think Allison Ferguson went out there before the officials said come yes. on. This time they just let it go, I think. Hutchison, free throw, good. Three-point play by the very tall Caroline Hutchison. <laughs> she sat at Wenda now. They're, they're trying to give her one more, but it should be... <laughs> they should be... They'd be more than happy to take another free throw. Oh, yeah, but they did give her the three-point play because yep. they have 25 points on the board now. Henry inbounds the ball. Marshall has it. Now sends it to Tingle, and that was very close to over and back, but Marshall now has it in the forecourt. Obaveri on her. She makes a move to her left, sends it to the left corner. Henry's three on the way, no good. Rebound grabbed by DeWoody, and here comes Fulcher. Kennedy Hill makes oh. the spin move. She nice. traveled and got away with it, but Woo. she put the ball in the basket, and she drew the foul. You think she traveled, don't you? Well, I think it could have been called, but it was a pretty nice move. <laughs> in this day and age, it's not traveling. Well, in the NBA, <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> The League of Subjective Officiating, but yes, here's Kennedy yes. Hill. Put it in there, Kennedy, come on. Yes. 45 to 28. You know, if they could uh, get maybe three more baskets in a row in succession, then uh, this game would get exciting. All right, Marshall taking a long look at the basket from 30 feet away. Now she's backing up with Obaveri playing defense, trying to get around her. Now she's at the top of the key and oh. feeds it in there. Short jumper in and out, no good. Hutchison, the rebound, hands it to Obaveri. That was a tough luck shot by Allison Ferguson. And now there's another score. It's Kennedy Hill. She puts it in to make it 45 to 30. I'll and I hear what, a whistle. She did a great job of posting up. She just put herself in that position, and there was an easy pass, and she was right there to lay it in. Good job by... Kennedy Hill. I'm not sure why they stopped play. Did the ball go out of bounds or I something? I did not see it either. I was but putting the numbers still, in the book. They still have possession of the ball, but they're in their own backcourt. And Fulcher kind of feeling a momentum swing is uh, trying to apply some pressure. Inbound pass to Green. Now here comes the double team. There's a cross-court pass. There goes Marshall into the paint. Little floater off the back iron. No good. She rebounds her own miss. And now traveling called on Tingle before she drives to the hoop. I'm seeing growing enthusiasm over on the Fulcher bench. Yeah, they Hutchison whittled about throwing six the ball in, the that's lead. a good move, I think. She's, you know, with her height. Yeah. It's just, she see the ball, it would also be better. good to have her on the floor. Ah, but there was a pass that was broken up. And now it's taken away. And there is a blocked shot. My goodness. Kennedy Hill with the block shot. Now Jordan Marshall gives the ball off to Henry, who goes all the way around the perimeter. She tried to get around Flores, and now she throws a pass that was almost lost out of bounds. Ferguson got it back to Marshall. Now it's back in the hands of Ferguson. Shoots a short one, no good. And way back out to the perimeter again. There's the three on the way by Henry. No good rebound, Obaveri, and a held ball. Obaveri and Allison Ferguson. And the ball will belong to Manville. 118 to go in the third. 
Actually, it'll belong to Fulcher. Sorry about that. I saw an official point the other way. Okay. So I had a reason. All right, here goes Flores. And she tries to bounce it in there to Kennedy Hill, who's knocked down. But it's just white ball. No foul call. The ball just went out of bounds. And correction, I said it was Kennedy Hill. It was actually Caroline Hutchison. Got to get that pass up. It was uh, kind of at her shin. Kind of yeah, hard for her to. Inconvenient height. Yeah, had she for a ball to be it. coming at you. Henry, guarded by Hutchison. Now goes around her, around her, pulls up at the right restraining line and misses a short jumper. And here goes Obaveri pushing it down the floor. Kennedy Hill wanting the basketball. There goes Obaveri and spins it off the glass. We've got us a 13 point game. It's 45 to 32. Oh, you've got to be. A and Roger, now a foul Roger. on Obaveri. Oh, my goodness. That was just a fall down by Jordan Marshall. Oh, that's a tough call, oh, Roger. Come on. That is a tough call, and Coach Brown is beside herself. And Four fouls so. now. Or is that five? I don't know if that's... The scoreboard says four, so I think she's just going to the bench yeah, as a precaution. Yeah, to save her for the fourth quarter. But she's going to have to play the fourth quarter with one foul. It is 45 to 32, less than half a minute to go. Henry, I think she turned the ball over and got away with it. She drives around Ashman. She still has the ball, and now Flores is guarding Marshall. A little between the feet dribble, just showing off a little bit. Flores staying with her. Now she moves toward the top of the key, changes direction. Oh, it no. Up. No good. Uh. And there's a foul called on Flores as Marshall goes to the floor after she released that shot. Sorry for, uh, I kind of blurted in there. Uh, it's just one of those things, she was shooting a tough shot. You hate to foul her on that. Now she gets to go to the free throw line. She has 21 points. Does well, you know, Patrick, Marshall. it's all about sincerity, okay? And if you can fake that, then you're good. Uh, what are you saying, fake what? If you can fake sincerity, then uh, I think you might have a future. Are you telling me that I'm faking sincerity? <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> you got to learn sincerity. And if you can fake that, then you're good. So I'm just kidding about that. These actually. are uh, wise proverbs brought to you by Roger Smith. Wise proverbs, <laughs> wise cracks. I don't know what you'd call them. <laughs> but we're going to make sure this game is entertaining. Uh, of course, it would be fun if Fulcher got it down to single digits and then... Uh, yeah, you know, we yeah. had high drama right at the end. It so would be exciting. And we will hope the, for that. But the in the delay. meantime, we're yeah. going to. Uh, Would she have some blood on her uh, uniform there or what? Um, Marshall had to go to the bench area to get some sort of uh, solution on her uniform. Okay, so now she is legal according to the rule book. And she goes to the free throw line. First shot, good. Saw some really amazing free throw shooting in the game today between Dulles and uh, Jersey Village. Amazing and percentage. Both teams, or? both teams yes. That's both free throws good. Two oh. seconds left. It's too late to do anything. There's the buzzer. We're done with three quarters of the basketball, and it's a 15-point game. 47-32, Manville leads Fulcher, but Hope Springs Eternal, and we're coming back, baby. From first Sunday to Friday after next, Selma to South Central, the beauty shop to the Players Club, we have been Fresh Princes and Bats, Airmen and All-Stars, Players and Presidents. And each and every story is beautifully black, no matter the hue, shade, or tone, because these stories are all our stories. Introducing the Black Experience on Xfinity. It's a new channel, a first of its kind where you choose what's on. So it starts whenever you're ready and it's endorsed by the African American Film Critics Association. It's a place where you can go to learn, to laugh, to educate and uplift. 
To launch your new experience, just say Black Experience into your Xfinity Voice remote to instantly enjoy the ultimate in Black entertainment anytime. The Black Experience channel is the new place to experience our stories, only on Xfinity. Restrictions apply, not available in all areas, requires Xfinity TV with X1. VibeFortBend.com Super Saturday Basketball Playoff Extravaganza. Boys and girls games, five of them, count them, five, has been brought to you. Well, I'm not going to say has been because we're not done. But so far and continuing on, brought to you by Xfinity with the X1 Sports app. Get up to the minute scores, stats, and standings right on your TV. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. Manville getting the ball to start the fourth quarter. A three on the way, in and out and back in. Kaya Henry drained it from the left corner. That hurts Fulcher in a big way. They had gotten within 13, and now they're down by 18. DeWoody with an entry pass. And now back to Kennedy Hill, her three-pointer from the top of the key comes up short. Jordan Watson now on the floor for the Chargers. Now holding the ball over her head is Kaya Henry and then bounces it in. Now they get it back in the hands of Marshall. Behind the back dribble, get across the timeline. This is the first minute of the fourth quarter. It's 50 to 32, Manville on top. And Marshall with the 20 footer, no good. Almost a rainmaker, it had that high Purvis short trajectory. But here comes Layla DeWoody right down the middle of the floor for Fulcher. Moving to her left, launches a three. It's too long, no good in the rebound. It's one and done as it's Kennedy Allen grabbing that rebound. Puts the ball in the hands of Jordan Marshall. Scores 20 points a game for Manville. She is their main offensive force and the best one to be handling the ball when it really counts. Now the ball is in the hands of Kaya Henry. Tatiana Washington playing defense on her. I think Coach Brown wants her to come out on her. But now the, the ball is lost out of bounds. Kaya Henry was going into the paint and she lost the basketball. One thing that impresses me about Manville is they have multiple players who can handle the ball very well. And it's hard to defend them because so many of them can take you off the dribble. It really does help you out in a pinch there. Yep. When you're getting that pressure defense. If there are no weak links. Jordan Marshall dribbling. DeWoody on her. She's kind of keeping her off with one hand. Now the ball being dribbled by Henry. They're kind she of doing a little weave green. here. Running some clock it looks like. Yeah, I think Why that's not? a good idea. Here's Green trying to get handle. around Hill, and then Obaveri almost steals the ball. It ends up in the hands of the player she was guarding, Henry. She missed a shot. Rebound to Fulcher. Here comes DeWoody. Is she going to try another one of those threes? She gives it to Obaveri, and she wants DeWoody to set a pick for her. Obaveri does. She's on the right wing, moving toward the right corner. Now changes direction, back to the right elbow, launches the three. Good. Actually, it's a two. Her beautifully painted toenails were on the line. <laughs> it was close, yeah, it was close. Oh, that's, oh, back. that's over yeah, and back. Yeah, She was not, definitely not over the line yet. Kaya Henry had the ball in the forecourt. She threw it to Green, who had not yet established herself in the forecourt, and that's a break for Fulcher. And they need to start well, making those breaks happen fast. Woody inbounds to Hill. Moves it across the timeline, gets it to Obaveri. Obaveri driving inside the three-point arc into the paint. Puts it up, a beautiful floater. Oh, that was smooth. You can't coach that, Patrick. She's just a great talent. It's a 14-point game. Henry has it, starts left, now right. Hands it to Marshall, going right down the middle. Open hoop. Obaveri fouls oh, no. her. I don't think she actually fouled her, but the foul is called. And she is done for the evening. Obaveri really wants to have her say with the official before she leaves the floor. Uh, Coach Deshauna Brown is all the way into the corner of the of the court area, 
just, you know, not real happy with that call. And Obaveri has, has gotten a couple of really kind of ticky-tack type fouls. He kind of tough breathed to, on her kind of fouls. You know, she breathed on yeah, it, it's her a tough, opponent. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to say from where we're at, you know, but uh, sure didn't look like a couple of them were fouls. But. Well, the good news is S.A. Obavere is a sophomore. Yeah. I don't think she deserves to be disqualified from this game for five fouls, but she's going to learn from this. Yep. Things don't always go your way. Yep. And she will come back in the season 2021-22, and she'll be better, be better for it. Jordan Marshall hit that first free throw. The lead is back up to 15, 51 to 36, and the second one is also good. 52 to 36. Dewitty dribbling in the backcourt. She faces a double team. And quickly gets it ahead to Kylie Ashman. Now they're in the forecourt. Kennedy Hill layup. She blew the bunny from the right side. But Manville mishandled the rebound and it went out of bounds. That's an interesting ringtone you have going there, Patrick. <laughs> Sounded like a saw in a shop. A circular saw. <laughs> so Fulcher tried to inbound the ball and Green... Almost made another steal. She knocked a chair over. Yeah, and she was. And uh, she's a high class girl. Polite, I can tell. polite enough she, to put it back. She upright. put it back right where it belonged. Right. She could have just left it there. No one yeah, would have cared. No, she, uh, I'm definitely. impressed with yeah. Michaela Green. Yeah, that was impressive. DeWitty with a behind the back dribble, but she loses the ball. Now Marshall and she have hands on it. And, and, and Roger, the held ball will award it to Fulcher. Maybe that's another thing we've never seen in sports history, mm -hmm. uh, picking up a chair and putting it in exactly back where it belonged after running into it. Yes, it seems like something Batman would do. <laughs> Kylie Ashman along the baseline put up a floater. It was a little too strong, and it rolled out no good. And then we got multiple players on the floor grabbing for a loose ball, and Kennedy Allen... It's not like football if you're the last one to get up off the bottom of the pile. That's not how they decide who has possession. But the possession arrow favors Manville in this situation. Ashman comes off the floor and Tatiana Washington comes back on for Manville. Now bringing it in is oh. Ayana Sam and a quick whistle. Patrick, if the last four minutes and 18 seconds go by this slowly, as slow as the last, I don't know, 20 seconds of clock time have gone by, um, yeah, it's, I might uh, just have to bed down right here. You'll have to finish <laughs> the game. Well, both, uh, both teams are in the bonus, and so that means we'll be marching to the free throw line for every foul. It's a parade. Yeah. I love a parade, yeah. but not a parade to the free throw line. Yeah, and uh, especially uh, if it's your fifth game, right? Jordan Marshall's free throw is good. By the way, uh, our friend Chad Washington is singing to my left. I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone. Oh, he was singing I Love a Parade. <laughs> you need to work on that because I couldn't recognize the tune. Marshall hit the second free throw. I, I notice he's got a Penn State shirt on. Is he a Penn State guy he down there? He is. He's very much so. And a hat. DeWoody gets it across the midcourt stripe. Marshall applying some defensive pressure, but not too vigorous. Now into Tatiana Washington. Turns around at the left elbow. Bounce pass. Trying to get it to Jordan Watson, but it goes out of bounds. Last touched by the Chargers. Washington leaves the game, and Caroline Hutchison is back in. Caroline looks like she is playing her last game. Same thing for Layla DeWoody, Jordan Watson. Kyle Ashman, the class of 21. So here we have Sam dribbling the ball, guarded by Hutchison. She hands off to Jordan Marshall, and they're just spinning some clock here. We're under four minutes to go. It's 54 to 36. Now a double team. Travel. And there's a travel call. Kaya Henry trying to twist her way out of a two defender sandwich <laughs> and she took steps as she did yeah she kind of lost her balance and 
for that effort, she gets to come on and sit on the bench for a minute. Might be subbing defense offense. Flores inbounds it to DeWitty. DeWitty working on her dribbling. Now gets it back to Flores. Launches the three. Way short and wide right. Now here come the girls back in on offense. Coaches uh, subbing offense and defense to uh, run the clock, I guess, on offense. So you got Green and Henry coming in and Mejia and Tingle coming out. And they're sitting ready to go back in uh, when the possession changes. They're sitting like one at of the those hockey of coaches who says change lines every 40 seconds. Yes, and they're doing that weave action again. You can do this when you have this kind of ball handling. Henry, and she's doing some great dribbling. Sweet Georgia Brown, she can yeah. handle that basketball. Yeah, I was thinking uh, Curly Neal. You remember him, don't oh, you? Oh, yes, of course. And now, finally, a held ball. As you got Jordan Marshall. DeWoody got her hand on the basketball. So here's some and, trivia for you, Roger. And what's that? I got a trivia question Hold for on you. a second. I just want to say kudos to all the girls for not getting chippy. Yes, yes, we referred okay. to that earlier. Uh, well, it's let's not really the next not, break. Give me your trivia. Yeah, it's not really a trivia, so go ahead. All right, DeWoody throws it inbounds, and the pass broken up. Back out to DeWoody. And now she tries to throw a pass. Actually succeeds to Jordan Watson, but it's stolen away by Michaela Green. She has been impressive all game with her quickness and strength. And she hands the ball to Henry, and there's not too much defensive pressure being applied here because the game's the issue of this game was settled a long time ago, but Flores does make a steal, and the official <laughs> kind of helps her out by screening off a defender, and she went unmolested to the hoop <laughs> and scored to make it 54-38. to 38. And now I think, did Manville just throw it away, or was it tipped it was, out by full shot? It was tipped, yeah. Okay. I do like the way Manville is uh, running their offense at the end. Um, you know, they're running clock. They don't have to score all the points you know like you see so often these days they do get it into the forecourt here with sam sam is going to show off her ball handling skills flores wants to steal it away though and there she goes right down the middle the defense left to vacuum and she blew the bunny she was going straight to the hoop and she missed it jordan watson Grab the rebound, and Fulcher's Flores is fouled near the far sideline. What were you going to say before? Well, I was going to ask your opinion. It's more of an opinion thing. We were watching um, Henry with her good ball handling, and we were mentioning a couple names. Who is the best ball handler in of all time? Oh, and that's it, a... Who would you say the best ball handler, <laughs> speaking of dribbling and passing and whatnot? Okay, let me think about that. Because one, one that comes to my mind is Pete Maravich. Right. Yeah. Um, now, he might be more flashy than, you know, here's a good pass. Inside and Kennedy Hill, correction, Caroline Hutchison scores. It's 54 to 40, 116 to go in the game. Manville gets it into the forecourt. And it's Mejia doing some nice dribbling. Hands off to Sam. Says, here, you, you do it a little bit. Flores is still playing good, vigorous defense. And DeWoody... Trying to stop Marshall, and Marshall now bounce pass over on the left side, and Shadaria Tingle scores, and a timeout taken by the Manville Mavericks. Um, so you had you had time to think about that? I know. No, you've been busy. I haven't. See, the thing is, it's not just a matter of not having the time. At the end of a day, I'm yeah. I'm broadcasting my fifth game. Um, Are you going to use that as a, a I'm reason? I'm going to use it to, as an excuse this time. To not time, give yes. me a, a name, huh? I can't really think clearly. I, Bob I Cousy. To, you got some ginkgo biloba over there, and uh, maybe my, or some Prevagen. Maybe Mark, that would help me. But Mark the thing Jackson. Is, he was a good ball handler. Okay, so the thing is, I will I will just piggyback on your Maravich. Yes. Now, a lot of people would say, was that? For flash, or did it actually serve the purpose of giving your team the best chance to score and win a well, game? Well, that's that's true, and that's yeah. a good question. But as far as what he could do with the ball, was it's amazing. You know, if you want to look at something close, you know, that uh, I guess 
bled over into this century, I'm going to go with Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. What about Magic Johnson? Oh, Magic, <laughs> man. Well, I, I just – ball handling was just a part of the amazing – What about Larry Bird? Uh, he was okay. pretty amazing. <laughs> we could do this forever. Yeah. And we'll do it on a summer Zoom program, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's 56-40. to 40. Fulcher wants to get a couple more baskets before the buzzer goes. Under the 42-second mark, Flores gets it into Tatiana. And now a nice bounce pass, but too hard. And Kennedy Hill saw it bounce off of her forearms and beyond the baseline. So, Obavere, Tatiana Washington, Reina Flores, and Kennedy Hill are all going to be back for the Fulcher Lady Chargers. But everybody on the Manville roster is going to be back next week. And now a length of the court pass. I think that was a double dribble. Doesn't matter. Kennedy Allen scored to make it 58-40. to 40. Less than half a minute to go. And another turnover in the backcourt by Fulcher. We always like to say thank you and a verbal salute to all the seniors who are playing in high school for the last time. So you've got that, those four. Is it four? Let's see. One, two, three. Yeah, four seniors on the Fulcher Lady Chargers roster. We wish you nothing but success and happiness and everything that you pursue beyond your graduation from Churchill Fulcher High School. And a five second call. <laughs> Against Jordan Marshall. She didn't like it. Uh, it's just because she's competitive. Yeah, it's... Uh, we talked about it one of these games uh, recently, Roger, where we wonder if some things need to be called. I'm not sure if it was five seconds, but apparently it was. Flores tried to throw it in, and Green is still defending yeah, every pass. They're not, <laughs> they're not stopping. It yeah, it's you know, there's another thing in play here, Patrick. There are so many games that had to be pushed to today... They're, they're finding every official that they possibly can. And you're sure. going to have one. some crews are better than others. Kennedy Hill from the corner on the left side. No good. Rebound fought for. Still being volleyballed around. And there it goes. That's the end of the game. And Manville, a decisive winner, 58-40. to 40. And now this, Patrick, this always touches me, even if if I don't know any of the people involved. This is when the tears come. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's girls, doesn't matter if it's boys. When you realize you are walking out of the arena of competition in the sport that you love, is the last time for you, it just always hurts. Yeah, and you're never gonna play with that particular group again. And uh, there is a finality to it, and it's very, it can be very sentimental. I know I was. Yeah. Way back in the day. Yeah, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Me and my teammates, uh, the last game that we played. Yeah. Uh, back in those days, you didn't have four teams from every district go to the playoffs. We didn't make the playoffs. And uh, it's just sobbing. Big yeah, time I sobbing. Know. Yeah, we. I'm, I'm, I, I was not happy. I was, I was sad, definitely. All right. But... Uh, we're not really sad today, except we are a little sad for the, for the Fulcher Charger girls, but we've had a good day of basketball, seen some great competition. And uh, you know what? More than sad, Patrick, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that last part of the game kind of moved along a little faster than you were hoping it, you know, you, you were hoping it was going to, and it did. They, they foul, the foul stopped, and so you don't have to pitch a tent here and sleep here. You can go no. home. You know, I'll bet if I really needed to, I could ask uh, Coach uh, Deb Mize, the assistant AD. If I needed to sleep here, I could sleep here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She, no, and she's, she's saying something through her mask. It she's looks waving you out of here, what she's doing. <laughs> what? She, <laughs> she's giving she me per said permission, that you could but stay you, and I had to she's leave. seen enough for you, Roger. I can't believe she said that. You were that. here earlier and back. And okay, Roger, see, how many miles you put on today? You uh, put a, I didn't even count, but <laughs> it's like. A couple hundred. From near Kempner High School, here to Hobson, all the way to Del Mar, back to Hobson, 
back home. Well, you know, it's going to be over 100 for sure. Huh? I think so. 150 maybe. All right. So, um, as I once saw, saw – um, oh, never mind. I'm not even going to say that. <laughs> It's, it's, late, it's just Roger. starting to get silly, it's starting to get stupid, and it's my fault. It's not you. It's not you, it's me. Okay? So <laughs> You're our not going to do the it's not you, it's me trick, are you? <laughs> that, that's not a trick. That's it's just, just an assessment. You know the Seinfeld episode? Yeah. You're not going to do it's not me, it's you, or whatever the yeah, heck George that is. Yeah, George said, I invented it's yes, not right. you, it's me. Okay, oh, we've already boy. done this longer than we need to. Yeah. Our yeah. final score, 58 to 40. Manville defeats Fulcher. Congratulations to every Fort Bend County team that has advanced to the next round. And as I do every week, I'm going to email people like Nikki Nelson, the athletic director for Lamar Consolidated ISD, standing right over here to our right. I'll check with Dina Scott, and I'll end up having to email lots of coaches and athletic directors and say, can we come to your game? But of course. Because of the great blessing of so many Fort Bend County teams moving on to the next round, it's going to be very hard to decide which games to do. We're not going to be and able to do them all. We are, I hate to say this, Roger, but, but who gets to make that decision? Me. Do, see? It's I, all I, on my shoulders. I kind of put you on the spot there. Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, I know it's, t- it's tough for Roger and to do that, but uh, we've got to make decisions and... It'll some, be fun. It'll well, be fun. I hope sports, they can uh, make yeah. some uh, be, be be part of it with you at some point next week. Well, there are some sports where it's pretty easy to make the decision because there aren't that many different choices. Right. However, when it comes to basketball in Fort Bend ISD, you got boys, you got girls, and lots of quality teams, and so uh, there's a lot of games being played. And of course, we love them all, all the teams and all the games. All right. For Patrick Kinnick and everybody on the Vipe team, thank you for being with us today. You can always go back and listen to the games that we broadcasted today on podcast on vipefortbend.com. We appreciate your support, and we will talk to you next week for more great basketball action. Good night, and God bless. Stay warm.